real quick and we'll move on with the rest of the service but if you have your Bibles I want you to turn with me to Revelations chapter number 3 verse number 20 I won't, I won't be before you long but I feel like the time is now I, it's, it's now, it's now, it's now, it's now it's now, it's now, it's now the time is now um If y'all want to stand there, you can. It won't be. I promise you, it won't be long. Or you can just have a seat. At, uh, I'm really trying to. He said this. Behold. This is what he told me to tell you. He said, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." If anyone hears my voice, if anyone hears my voice, I'm going to switch mics. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he says, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. I, I, won't, I promise I won't be before you long because I, I want us to pray for a few minutes. But I keep hearing that in my spirit, and it won't get out. And as Sister Erica was, was speaking, and as, y'all, and as they were singing, it kept coming up. And so, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Father, I thank you. Your word stands settled forever in heaven. Yes. And God, we bless you, we praise you, and we honor you. For it is in Jesus' name. Speak your word. We're listening. Amen. I won't be, I won't be long, I promise. He said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Previously in that scripture, and I'm gonna hurry up when I say this, because I wanna get to the part that he told me to get to. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. God introduced three churches in that. One um, was Sardis, one was um, the, the church of Philadelphia, and I keep, the other one I think was Laodicea. One was ice cold. The other one was hot. He said, and, 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 and the third one was lukewarm. And then he finished it off in verse number 19, and he says, to those who I love, I rebuke and I correct, but, to do, but, but it's a sign that I love you. And God went on to say that. And then he says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anybody, y'all can be seated. If anybody, if anybody, 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 anybody comes and opens up the door to me, he says, I will, and not that I might, I will come in. Listen, I, he says, I will come in and I will suck or I will eat with them. I'm knocking. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And if, you, and, if you, and if you open up your heart and let me in, you have my promise that I'll come in. He says, you have my promise. You have my word that I will come in. And what does God say about his word? He says, I watch over my word to perform it. I watch over what I say so that I'll do it. And he asked this question. He says, put me in remembrance of my word. What I said, I want you, when you come to me in prayer, remind me what I said. Remind me who I said I would be to you. Remind me that I said that I am a way maker, a miracle worker, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Remind me that I said I am the light of the darkness. Remind me that I said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Apart from me, nobody can do anything. Remind me that I said I'm a healer. Remind me that I said that I do things that is impossible. Remind me of what I said. Remind me that I healed the sick, that I raised the dead. Remind me of who I am. Remind me of who I said I would be to you. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I'm, 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 the reason why I wanted to bring that to your attention is because I kept feeling this all week. I've been listening to the same three songs for like two weeks over and over and over and over again. He says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. I'm knocking, I'm knocking, I'm knocking, I'm knocking. I'm knocking, I'm knocking, I'm knocking. Why won't you? He says, even my word is knocking. He says, I sent my word. And for some of us, God's words have been coming back and forth, back to the throne. And he says, what? He says, no, you hadn't accomplished what I sent you to do. I need you to catch that real quick because what I'm going to ask you to do in a few minutes may change the very course of some of our lives. He says, I want you, when I stand at the door and knock, I, I want you to invite me in. I'm a king and I'm sovereign and I own the world, but I gave you dominion in everything. I gave you dominion over the, I gave you dominion. I gave you dominion. And I'm not going to bombard my way in. I want you to ask me to come in. You are my ambassadors. I want you to ask me to come in. Wherever you invite me, whatever you give me, he says, I'll fill it. Ask the woman who was poor and her son, were, and they were about to die. She had decided, I'm going to bake a little oil and I'm going to die. And he says, whatever you give me, I'll fill it. See, you started something a few minutes ago when you said that. He says, whatever you give me, I will fill it. If you give me an empty room, I'm going to fill it. If you give me a, a bank account and you give it to me for my glory, I will fill it. If you give me your house, I will fill it. If you give me your health, I will fill it. If you give, listen, parents, you have dominion and authority over your children. And if you give your children to the Lord, the Lord will always be coming into the midst. They have to actively push him away. But the Lord will have a generational promise that he'll keep coming back that he would pursue them. And not only just your children, but your children and your children's children. He says, whatever you give me, I'll fill it. If you give me a broken family, I'll mend it. Whatever you give me, I'll fill it. I keep hearing God say that. You give me a boat, an empty boat, I'll fill it with fish. Whatever you give me, I'll fill it. Except for a tomb. I like to empty those. I, I don't know why he just... But if you, whatever you give me, I will fill it. Because I'm God and I'm God alone. Daniel gave him space in the lion's den. What did he do? He filled it with his presence. So much so that the lions laid down and went to sleep. Meshach and the, uh, Shadrach and Abednego gave him space in the fire. And, 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 the, and the king had a revelation. He says, I see... You threw three in there, but I see four. And one of them, before it was ever even a rev Jesus had never even walked the, well, at least not that we know of, walked the earth at that point in time. But he says, and one of them looks like a son of the living God. Yes. Whatever you give God, he'll fill it. There was a woman, and, and, and she invited the prophet over. And this is what the woman said. The woman said, the woman said, check this out. She says, I'm going to invite the man of God over. I'm going to make him a bed in my upper room. I'm going to make him a stool so that he can sit, so that his weighted presence can be on. She says, I'm going to make him a place, a table, so that he can sit and eat. He said, wherever you give God, he will fill it. 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 If you give God a broken heart, he'll fill it. If you give God an empty space, he'll fill it. That's why he said that if you cast the demon out, he says, and you don't fill it with something. That demon will come back seven times with seven other ones. And the last day to be worse than the first. What he's telling you is, whatever you empty out, you got to give it to me so I can fill it. I like empty vessels. If you give me your heart, I'll fill it. Whatever you give me, I'll fill it. And I'm almost done. God is saying that I'm waiting on you. I've been waiting on you to invite me into places so that I can fill it. We had a test the other day. Let me tell you what happened to me the other day. Strangest thing happened to me the other day. They give me, according to some of them, some of the worst kids at my school. And I don't know why, but I gladly accepted it. I love them. They come to me in all kinds of shapes, forms, fashions you name it, and I might not agree with what they're doing, but I love them through it. I got one little girl that I battle with every day. 
make her mad every day. She'd just snatch her pants and walk out. And, I, and while she's walking out, I'd say, I love you, though. And there's been times when she walk out and she stick a middle finger up at me. But you know what, though? When she come back, the love of God is still the same. I still tell her no, but I'm going to still love her. I told her the other day, I said, I'm going to give you a G. I ain't even going to give you a no F, but I'm going to love you through it, though, until you get the, and, But you know what? They come. And I realized the other day that one of the reasons why they keep coming to my class had nothing to do with me. It had to do with the music and the presence that I put in the classroom. And here's what happened. I called my wife. I had to go outside and leave the class and call my wife. And I called call my mom. I called my mother-in-law. Let me tell you why I called them. I had them, and we were sitting there. And one of the coaches, this is a wrestling coach, he came in. And we joke sometimes about, you know, different things. And I told you about a little girl that came in my class, and she was going to, one of her friends had tried to commit suicide. And we prayed her through, and she's alive. And she, she's alive. She's alive. <laughs> But she came and she was sitting in my class. I call her Tinkerbell, because she floats around everywhere. I call her, but she came and she was sitting in my class, and the wrestling coach came, and while we was just talking and just joking or whatever, he goes to church sometimes, so he just started singing. Mm. Jesus had the sin to rub it all. And then I said, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. And then I said, from beginning to the end, it will always be has always been you, Jesus. My class was filled with, I'm not, with, with, they give me, because of this type of students that they give me, they give me special needs students, like the extreme ones, my first block, because I love them, I call them the cool kids, because they just make me, they bring me some peace. And so I started singing it. And then I just stopped. And then the little girl asked me, the one whose friend had committed, she said, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? And I said, she said, because I don't know if I believe in all that. Her aunt is ultra-religious. She said, I don't know if I believe in all that. And I said, well, I do. I said, I admit some people fake stuff and they do stuff. I said, but God is real and he'll talk to you. I just left it at that. Because I'm tired of being put in a cocoon, in a shell. And I, so I just left it at that. And when I left it at that, they, they, he, 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 he started singing. And he, said, and he sang it again a little bit. And then he said, Waymaker. And then he just stopped. He didn't, say, he didn't even sing the song. And so then we started singing, I started singing another song because the girls started humming a different song. And I was like, oh, wow. And I was like, yeah, I remember that one too. And she said, yeah, I like that one. And then one of my special, my extreme special needs kids, all of a sudden he busted out. I'm not lying, I'm not lying, I promise, I'm not lying. He busted out and he said, hallelujah. And he just started joking. He said, I heard that in church. And then he said, hallelujah. And his voice gets pretty. He said, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. And I got chills. I'm sitting in an extreme, I'm talking about a high caliber sped class. And he says, for the Lord our God is almighty. And I said, I, okay, you want to get it? Let's, let's go then. For the Lord. And then the little girl started singing it. And then the coach started singing it. And then one of the other kids just started rocking back and forth. And I was like, something's weird going on here, but I'm going to go with it. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. And then I said, you know what, I'm going to give y'all a break because y'all being good today. I'm going to let y'all play. Oh, no. Then I looked over and I heard this other kid who barely can even talk. He, 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 he barely can even talk. And I looked over. And he was singing. Well, I'm, try I'm trying to remember the song he was. Oh yeah, he said, th yeah, that way he said, he said, even then I don't see it and what. And he was like, what is he saying? And then I got closer. And he was saying, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't, he was singing that song. You never stop. We never stop working. And this is where it's sounding. We never stop. We never stop working. But he was going to town. Even when I don't see it. And he rocking. Even when I don't see it. You're, and he's hitting the death. You never stop. You never stop. And they said, what is he saying? And I started singing the song with him. And then he stopped and he switched because he started singing the melody. And he said, ah, ah, man. Amen. Amen. And he's just singing the song. Waymaker, miracle work. 
even when I don't, and he just, I'm telling you, he was doing a melody. I'm telling you, he was doing a praise melody. And you never stop, you never, and he's singing it. And I'm, and, and, and chill. And next thing I know, everybody in the room is doing something. And I'm looking and I'm just like, and as I'm worshiping God in the classroom, I'm watching them worship God. God said, I will be worshiped among the nations. I heard, I will be worshipped among the, I will be worshipped. He said, I'm going, he said, if people don't want to, I'm going to get my worship. The question is, I don't grab the mic, the mic anymore. And the question is, do you want to worship me? Do you want to get in on this worship? Because I'm going to be worshipped. And when you worship me, he said, I will come in. Not I might, I will come in. I know. Some of y'all may not think that's something, but things like that don't just happen by Kawinki Dink. God said, I will get all the glory. I will worship. Here's the reason why I'm saying that. What happens if you invite God on your job? What do you think happens if you invite God into your finances? What do you think happens if you invite God into your marriage? What do you think happens if you invite God into your children's life? What do you think happens if you invite God? God, I'm getting ready to do school work. Can you come and sit with me and help me? Listen, he is the God who created calculus and math and geometry and trigonometry and any other kind of ometry. And if you invite God in to any circumstance, God will Come in. I'm telling you, whatever you invite God in. I know, I know, it may seem weird that we, we're doing this right now. But there's a reason for the madness. And I, I told you I won't be before you long. Whatever you invite God into. Whatever you invite God into you give him not that he needs it because he could just bum rush right over you but whatever you invite God into hear me you give him the right to rule and reign I am God alone and when you invite me into my situation in your situation child I show up I show up. I show up. I'm telling you, if we can get God to show up, whatever you invite God into, whatever you invite God into, he feels it. They invited him in a room with a little girl. She was dead. And he said, to light thy kuma, which means damsel will rise. And she got up. They invited him to a graveyard and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Called him by name. Yes, Lord. They invited him to a tomb and immediately they met him one who had his dwelling amongst the tombs. Wherever you invite, invite the presence of the Lord. Hear me, I, I, hear me. Wherever you make an attempt to invite God, in a little while, we're going to have a tent revival. That's all it is. We're going to invite God. God, they're killing each other out here in these streets. We invite you. I've, I've heard stories and known of prisoners who invited God into the prison. And God came into the prison, and the prisoners got out early. Would change lives. I've seen people invite God into some weird situations. The, the prayer for, Psalms, for, for, for the first Gulf War was Psalms 91. And there was a soldier who, who, who they said that, that they got shot and the bullet stopped at the scripture because he had the scripture, the Bible, in, 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 his, in, his, in his chest. Right there. In his breastplate. Where his, I'm telling you, wherever you invite God, I don't care what your situation is. I don't care where you find yourself. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care what kind of a drought. If you invite God into a drought, watch the rain come. 
Elijah said, how long do you stand between two opinions? Yes. Let's have a duel. If God be God, we're going to serve him. But if whatever you're trying to serve be, be that, then we'll serve it. Yes. Let's have a showdown. You call on the name of your God. Yes. Yes. And I'll call on the name that's above every name. Yes. Yes. Let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Let's just see. Let's just, let's just see what happens. Yes. It's up to you. you. I'll let you go first. Let's just see what happens. You invite whatever it is that you worship, and I'll invite who it is that I worship, and we'll see which one to answer. The one who answers by fire, we'll let him be God. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills this room. I'm telling you, the, the, the ones who know how to do it, the ones who know how to do it, I'm sorry, y'all. The ones who, are we, we, are we, I'm, the ones who know how to do it, they know how to invite God in. One invitation to the Lord. I remember one invitation, the wedding invitation. Jesus, hey y'all, we ran out of wine. Mary's like, hey, son, can you, I know it ain't your time, you say it ain't your time, but can you turn this water into wine? Can you do something? I don't even know what you're going to, can you do something? One invitation. He said, woman, it ain't his time. And then the crazy thing is, Mary knew enough about his presence that when she got him to show up, she knew enough to say, you know what, whatever he tells you to do, because he's going to do it for me because he loves me, do it. Do you know that God loves you enough to show up? I'm telling you, he, listen, shake, shake the person beside you. Just touch the person beside you. I, don't, I normally don't do that. Just tell the person beside you. God loves you enough to show up. God loves you enough to show up. While we at it, while we shaking people, shake yourself and tell yourself, because some of y'all don't believe that. See, see, here's the thing. Some of you believe that God loves other people enough to show up. But if you're like me, I, I've been there, been there, been there, been there. I can get God to do it. I believe I can get God to do anything for other people. I'm telling you, I've walked in the hospital room and we prayed over the sick and seen them recover. I'm talking about they recover, we recover. I've seen what pray over people. I've seen, but there are times when it comes down to me and my situation. I don't know what it is. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you can get stuff for other people, but it comes to you? Why? Because you need to shake yourself and tell yourself, God loves me enough. My daddy loves me enough to show up when I call him. Some people love, some people, see, you got to deal with them two things. You can get God to show up for other people, but I want you to start getting God to show up for you. So, 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 so while you're touching them, touch yourself and say, God will show up for me. Because we're not going to make God out of lie. God said, when you call me, when you, when you call me, when you, Jesus, when you call me, I will. I will answer. The problem with some of us is we haven't accepted his answer because he hadn't answered in the way we want him to. We're going to, listen, when you call me, I will answer. 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 Your capacity, your ability to get God to show up in this next, in this next move, your ability to get God to show up is going to depend on how much of a breakthrough you get. Call on them. Call on them. I got some family members. I got some cousins. I got some, 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 some family members, some younger people that I've been, and I'm Lord, you said, I ain't say it, you said it, remember, put them in this memory for the word, that I have dominion over, uh, over a large portion of my family. See, for those of you who know, some of your families, whether you know, if you don't believe me, look around. Some of y'all need to look around because some of you are it, and you don't even know you're it. In your family, your family is separated into different jurisdictions. And for some of you, you have jurisdiction over an area of your family. 
and you have a patriarch over here, a patriarch or a matriarch over here, a this or that, and if you notice when something happened, everybody comes to you for something. Everybody comes to you, and sometimes it can be worse, but sometimes everybody comes to you. Let me tell you why. Because you are the patriarch or the matriarch of your family. It can be rough. Here's the reason why I'm telling you that. Because when you, sisters and brothers, invite God in, you have the right and the authority to invite God in to any area in your family. Ask Abraham. It didn't matter what Lot was doing all 100%. Abraham spoke to God on behalf of Lot and God answered Abraham until Lot would listen. I'm going to say that again. Abraham spoke to God on behalf of Lot and God answered Abraham on Lot's behalf until Lot listened. There are some Lots in your life. You need to start speaking to God on behalf of Lot. Notice, Abraham and Lot wasn't in the same place. But God is in the same place everywhere. And all you have to do is say, God, let your manifest the presence. God, I pray that you would visit him. I've been praying over some of my family. God, I pray that you would open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open. God, you gave me dominion and authority over in this area, in this region of my family. And so, God, I speak over everything that touches them that if it will not line up with you, remove it. I speak over everything that touches them, that it will glorify you. I speak over every relationship that they have, that it would line up with your word. I pray that their enemies would come at them one way, but flee in seven. God, I invite you into their situation. Yes. To them demons on my job, God, I speak life yes. over them. God, I pray, God, that you would dispatch angels around them to protect them, and they're going in and they're coming out. I'm telling you, whatever you give God, God will fill it. He's a filling God. It's one of the first things that happened in Scripture. God filled something. See, I don't believe me. Let me go ahead. real quick, real quick. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form of void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God did what? Hovered. Over what? The face of the water. Two times God filled something. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The earth was without form and void. Right? God filled it. Here you go. I'm about to be done. Whatever you give God, he will fill it. Open up your mouth, he'll fill it. Give him your stuff, he'll fill it. Give him a bad area in your relationship, he'll fill it. Whatever you give God, He'll fill it. I said a lot, and I tried to say it in a little bit of time, but this is what I want you to do. We're going to go through, and we're going to do the announcements, because we got to tell everybody where we're going to be next week. We're going to do the offering, because that's the way you give God something to feel. I get all that. We're going to bless you. We're going to speak the Abrahamic blessing over you in just a second. But for the next 10 minutes, I know we just got through worshiping. I'm going to play a song. And I want you to think of every area that you have not invited God in. Every area that you haven't given him dominion over. I don't care if it's unforgiveness. I don't care if it's a relationship. I don't care. See, God can restore the relationship, but he doesn't have to have you do things with those people again. God can just restore it. God can bring back peace. God can bring back victory. But what I want you to do for the next few minutes, and if you need prayer, you can come up here. We're going to pray, and then we'll be, we'll be out of here. But I want you to give God those areas in your life. Those areas in your life. I'm having to repent right now for something because I, when I got sick, I stopped giving God a certain area of my life. I'll be honest with you. I stopped exercising. I need to God, will you be my exercise partner? I know that may sound stupid for some of you, but I didn't give God that area to fill. And so, in just a second, we're going to play the song. If you want to go ahead and cue it, I want you to ask yourself, is there an area in my life that I didn't allow God to fill? Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to come. Fill this place. Fill this place. We're going to play the song.